Hey everybody. So today we're going to talk about the draconic chart. Um, I've gotten some emails recently about how it, asking how I work with this from prospective clients and, um, and past clients. And I do work with the draconic chart. Um, I do, I do a, um, I do a past life and karmic reading. And there is a part one and a part two to this. The part part one deals with um, the natal chart, like the north and south nodes, Pluto, the Pluto polarity point, any squares to the nodal axis, the planetary rulers, all of that kind of stuff. Um, it deals with all of that to give one an idea of their past life from the lens of the natal chart. I don't necessarily think this always has to be the most recent past life, but it's the most recent past life tied to this life. Meaning it could be the most recent past lifetime, or it could be a lifetime, three lifetimes back. <laughs> um, and for some reason that lifetime is more tied to this lifetime than the ones between it, between this lifetime and, and that one, if that makes sense. I don't think it always has to be the most recent past life. Um, so that's part one, but then part in part two, I explored the draconic chart <clears throat> and the draconic chart is said to be like the chart of the soul. Um, now I know there are a lot of people that think the draconic chart is a bunch of bullshit. Um, I'll be honest. I don't really want to hear your opinion about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I, not really, um, uh, because it, it, these kinds of conversations end up, end up just kind of turning into arguments and I'm not going to argue with you about this. You're more than welcome to feel however you feel about the draconic chart. Um, like you're totally more than, I'm not, I'm not trying to change your mind, so I'm not going to sit and argue with you about it. Um, so if you feel like it's bullshit, if you feel like the draconic chart is a bunch of bullshit, I would just quit watching. <laughs> I will be watching the video. Um, but if you're still watching, <laughs> the draconic chart is thought to be like the chart of the soul. The soul between all lifetimes and in this dimension, in this realm on earth. Um, it kind of works, it operates as an undercurrent in in this lifetime and in, in all lifetimes, like it'll kind of operate as an undercurrent. So like you're, you've got your natal chart, right? That is who you are in this incarnation. The draconic chart is who you are in the in-between, what I call the in-between, like the time between incarnations. And it is what your soul, it's the chart of your soul when you started incarnating, when you made the pact or made the choice or whatever to incarnate or, or had to, I guess it could be maybe had to start incarnating into this realm. That is, that's the chart you were given or what, or what have you, or that you wanted, um, for whatever reason, <laughs> kind of in the same way that I think of our natal charts being, you know, similar things like, I think, I do think that we have some kind of hand in, in, in how our natal charts look. I do think that we do exactly how, I don't know, but I do think that we do so that we can learn certain things in each incarnation throughout life. So, so, so that we're called to, to do this in each lifetime. Um, now, so, so the draconic chart always kind of functions as it'll function as an undercurrent, right? You, you might have your, your natal sun in Sagittarius, but you might have your draconic sun in, I don't know, Virgo. So that might kind of, um, that might give you, you might be functioning as a Sagittarius sun in this lifetime, but your soul on a soul level, it functions in a, in a more Virgo way. There's like a Virgo undercurrent to your sun. Say the same thing with the moon. Let's say you've got a, I don't know. Let's say you've got a, a Libra moon in this lifetime. But let's say um, in the draconic chart, you have I don't know, a Capricorn moon. That will give your Libra moon in this lifetime kind of a, a Capricorn-y, Capricorn-y <laughs> undercurrent. Um, it, it kind of flavors it. It's not in your face usually, but it is like a, it's like an undercurrent. 
Um, it's like an undercurrent of sorts. Now, the draconic chart, ah, it is so fucking windy today, sorry. The draconic chart, um, it gets its name. This, this actually, there's like, this, this supposedly dates back. There was like, um, they think they were using this back in like Babylonian times. Um, they were playing with this at least. <laughs> um, it gets its name. Um, it gets its name. The name comes from, it, it comes from the Latin name for the lunar nodes because another name for like the north node is the dragon's head. The other name for the south node is the dragon's tail. So that's kind of where the name comes from. Um, Cap, I might pronounce this wrong. Caput Draconis is the dragon's head. Cadia, Cada, Cada, I think. Draconis is the dragon's tail. So I think Draconic means dragon or something. I took Latin, I don't remember a fucking thing. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest, I took it and I don't remember anything about it. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think that's where the name comes from if anybody was curious. And, and the reason why that the nodes are so highlighted in the name is that um, this chart, the draconic chart is set. Everybody will have, it, in the draconic chart, the, the, the draconic north node is always set to zero degrees Aries. That's how the chart is set. Um, and then the draconic south node will always be at, a, at zero degrees Libra. So the chart is set by, by the draconic north node being in Aries, being at zero degrees Aries. And then what happens is depending on, you know, where your own natal north node is in your chart, it'll kind of shift the chart. The houses will stay the same. The planets will stay in those houses, but the signs will shift. The signs shift. Um, so <clears throat> that's kind of how the chart is created. I'll show a picture of a chart here, a, dr a, a draconic to natal comparison here in a few minutes. Um, I know that there are a lot of people that do work with this and they, they might work with it a little differently than I do. You can certainly, uh, this is one of those things that because it's so abstract, I don't really think there is a way to be like, you're doing it wrong because it is so ab abstract and it's, um, there's no way to really prove it. So I feel like however you feel called to work with this, if it's like I do, or if it's different than I do, I think what, you know, if you feel called to do that, do it a certain way, you should, you should roll with that. Um, there are some people that like to look at the draconic chart as a standalone chart. You certainly can do that. And I would encourage you to do that. Um, I think it's cool to, to just kind of look at and see what's different. And, but the way that I like to use it in practice, when I'm doing like my past life and karmic readings, the part one deals with stuff dealing with um, deals with stuff dealing with the natal chart from the natal chart lens, and then part two is the draconic. And I like to look at the draconic chart at the draconic to natal comparison because I feel like that's how you get the most use from the draconic chart. I mean, it's cool to see what what your chart, what the chart of your soul looks like. I mean, I think that's really cool to look at, but I think it probably serves you the most good to look at it up against your natal chart to get an idea of perhaps, you know, what you wanted to learn in this lifetime. Now, when I look at the draconic to natal, when I look at the draconic chart, draconic to natal comparison, something that I like to look at is the draconic Pluto and draconic Pluto polarity point. Since that kind of tell that kind of shows me, it kind of tells me where the person is coming from, right? Before ever incarnating on Earth in this realm, it gives me kind of a, a good base for that. Whereas the draconic Pluto polarity point will give me an idea of what they wanted to learn or understand or what have you across all incarnations in this realm on earth, in this dimension, whatever. Um, and I do think this is done in pieces. Like, I don't think that there's ever one lifetime where you learn everything. <laughs> I, I, I kind of don't think that that's the case. I think, you know, every lifetime you learn a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> now, I also know that there are people that like to look at all aspects 
um, in the draconic chart, in the draconic natal comparisons. I really don't do that. I focus on the conjunctions. If you feel called to throw in the oppositions, to throw in the squares, throw in whatever, go with what you feel called to do. I'm not saying that I'm right universally for everybody in, in my approach. I do feel like the conjunctions are the most important though. I feel like when you've got a conjunction to a from a draconic planet to a natal planet, that draconic planet is able to shine through that natal planet. Like it's that natal planet is a vehicle for that draconic planet to shine through. I'll show you what I mean. Here is a draconic to natal comparison and I'll put a link. I'll put a link to um to this chart in the description. Um, like here you can see that in their chart, they have Draconic Uranus. It's conjunct their moon and their IC. Mars is a little, is, is a little too far out. Draconic Mars is a little too far out of orb for me to count here. Um, I don't know if I really explored their chart, I might count it, I don't know. But I know Draconic Uranus is there, conjunct the natal moon and the natal IC. Now, this might make, this, this could, um, I could see it going like this where maybe there's a little bit more, like, okay, their, their, their natal IC is in, is in Libra, which shows that they need core balance, right? But having that draconic Uranus right there kind of makes me feel like there could be some core chaos like core chaos might shine through but or it could have a tendency to do that but but really what I think Uranus wants to do in this case is liberate um so once they figured out that balance that core balance I think that draconic Uranus can shine through in a different way and can be more liberating if you will um that's just an example kind of spitballing here I haven't actually flushed this this person's stuff out like that but it's just you know tossing out some ideas <laughs> um but i i personally would focus on the conjunctions um i feel like that's where you uh those draconic planets can really shine through with the conjunctions in a way that they may not and, and, and also i'll say this when you see conjunctions it makes my thought is okay so why did this why why is this set up this way where like in this person's case with draconic uranus conjunct the natal ic and moon what did they want to learn from this and 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 you, you know what i mean like that's kind of where my mind goes where did they what did they want to learn from this in this in this lifetime what did they want to achieve kind of thing um and how can they use that draconic planet in the best possible way how can they have it shine through in the best possible way? But yeah, that's kind of how I work with them. Um, that's kind of <laughs> my process, if you will. Um, I'm trying to think if I missed anything about this. No, I think that's pretty good. I think that's I think that's pretty good for starters. I would definitely, though, I'll say this. I would definitely play with. Um, I would definitely play with the past life thing from the natal chart lens first, because that gives you an idea, you know, looking at the north node and the natal chart kind of gives you an idea of where you wanted to go in this lifetime. And the south node kind of tells you where you were from, where you come from, from your most recent previous lifetime tied to this one. So I think it's important to look at that, to understand that. I think that once you understand that, I feel like the, the draconic stuff can kind of Look more into place, um, especially from a, from a draconic to natal comparison point of view. I feel like it kind of can click more into place. So I would start with the stuff in the natal chart and then move to this, but that is just my opinion. You can be like, fuck that. I want to dive right into <laughs> the draconic to natal comparison. You can pull this again. You can pull this on astro.com. Um, it's down towards the bottom. It's under the draconic chart, draconic to natal comparison. Um, okay, I'm going to get going because it's getting kind of long. I will put the blog post though too in the description that I've done about this, if you're curious. Um, if you want to follow us on Instagram, you can find us at Let's Fuck With Astrology. I'm at Saturn Season Astrology on Instagram. Natalie is at Abaterno Astrology on Instagram. 
If you want to like or subscribe or whatever people do on YouTube, you can you can uh, search for us at Let's Fuck With Astrology by searching for that. Um, if you do the Reddit thing, come join us on the subreddit Let's Fuck With Astrology. And I'm not going to do the star card thing because I didn't say anything about them. <laughs> okay. Um, I will see y'all later.